Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this week I have a brand new client. She has been doing base color for, I would say the past like year or so. Um, she did do highlights at some point that are very like on the tips of her hair by now, but everything is pretty much just a permanent color that has been covering her natural gray. And she naturally is already so light, but she doesn't really love that line of demarcation that you can see right at her root. You can see um, that really stark line of where the color has grown out compared to her natural. So today she came in wanting something that is just gonna like last longer and give her a really soft grow out against her natural hair. So she showed me a few different inspo photos and they all were in the gray silverish family. So some of the things that I wanted to consider with her hair is that her natural is really light. It's not going to give a lot of contrast. A lot of the pictures she showed me did have a lot of contrast with the lighter highlighted pieces. So hers is going to look overall more brighter and lighter. And um, I did explain that to her. The other thing was she also didn't mind if we did a very heavy highlight, which we're going to be doing today. She didn't mind feeling super blonde. Um, so we're going to work on trying to get her as light as possible. I'm going to be doing my signature gray blending technique with additional tip outs just to create a really pretty blend and have something that will just grow out really soft and look super seamless too from root to ends. So for her lightener today, I am using the Danger Jones Powder Lightener, which has lately been my go-to for any type of lightening service. Um, I love this lightener because it does have line plus levels of lift. It does have a slight bluish hue to it, which helps with a bit of toning, but overall I feel like this lightener is very strong. Even though it is on the strong side though, I don't have to really worry about um, compromise because it has some bonder in there and I feel like it just gives a really clean, even lift once it's reached to the desired level. I have never really had an issue with it, um, and so I feel like it works really great in foils and just great at getting my clients to the level that I need it, them to to achieve like these gray silver tones. If you are new here and haven't really watched a lot of my videos, um, I will briefly just kind of go over my gray blending technique. So I normally will take a detailed hairline section right at the nape here and I will weave that and then everything else in the back all the way up towards the front money piece, I'm taking a center section and basically taking this back section all in one go. And when I do this, I like to generally do slices, especially if it's a client's first time in my chair, because I wanna try and get the most amount of impact with each foil that I do. So slicing is definitely gonna give you that higher impact compared to a weave, because it gives you a more solid blend there. Um, and I will just continue this all the way up until I reach her hairline, which is her money piece in the very front. So today with my lightener, I normally will mix up a weak bowl in the beginning. So I like to dilute my 20 volume um, by adding in some 5 volume. And then for the rest of the head, I'll just be doing 20 volume just so that everything kind of catches up and gives it enough time to process before I need to even rinse anything out. 
So in the back, as I took those slices, I did leave a bit of negative space in between. And as I gradually work my way towards the front of her head, I'm going to intentionally make these slices a little bit closer together to kind of give her that more heavy highlighted look. We are trying to get the most amount of impact and just kind of get her as blonde as possible at this point so that we can try and get rid of a lot of that old permanent color that she has in her hair. So as I'm going through and doing this, I'm trying to keep my sections very clean, straight, and consistent. That's key with this type of application, especially when you're going back in for a retouch on um, something like this. So by now, I know exactly where my sections are, how big and how thick I generally will do them. So when she comes in for her next appointment and we work on getting rid of a lot of that permanent color that she has in her hair out, I will be picking out that dark that I'm leaving out today. So you see that hair that I'm leaving out besides the hair that I'm going to be painting on. So that hair is the hair that I'm going to be looking and searching for when she comes in next time so that we can hit those areas next. And the reason why we're not hitting them today is because we want to create something that is blended. We don't want something that is solid at this point. So it's best to leave those out and then get them later as her hair grows in. And it's kind of like bricklays the highlights a little bit and gives it that nice blended placement. So I totally could have used a different developer for her virgin regrowth and her areas that is color treated because generally if the hair is color treated, it is a bit more stubborn and contains more warmth than the virgin hair would. But the reason why I'm using the same developer for that virgin band and the color permanent color band is because the permanent color area is not that far off of a level than her natural. Now, if the permanent color band was a lot darker, like let's say it was about a level five and below, then I might really consider doing a different developer on those areas because they would lift warmer and a lot slower than her virgin hair. But because again, her permanent color area and her virgin area, the level is not so different. It's not too far off. I would say they're very similar and I can already tell based off of the texture of her hair, which her hair is a bit on the uh, medium to fine side, I would say. And so I had a feeling her hair would lift pretty well. I wouldn't have trouble with it. And then the other thing is to consider is the amount of gray that she has. So if a client has let's say 100% gray, which in her case, I feel like she has 100% gray. It's very consistent throughout her whole head. Now, when you put permanent color on hair that has 100% gray, in a few months, as they keep washing their hair, if you're using just a natural level um, and not a double natural into your gray formula, the odds of that permanent color fading out on her 100% gray hair is very high like it does lighten up i do have some clients like when we do um their base colors and then like in a few months we haven't touched their ends but we keep retouching their roots eventually that base color that's been covering those grays have now gotten a little bit lighter because of the gray resistant hair that it was trying to cover and a lot of times too a lot of clients do like that effect the way that it makes them look like they have natural highlights or anything like that. But that was also something that I considered when choosing what volume to use on her hair is because she has 100% gray. So underneath all that permanent color that she's been doing, I knew would be easier to lift out because she had 100% gray and because when you put permanent color on hair that is 100% gray, it is a little bit less resistant than if the hair had maybe like 50% gray. So now that I'm towards the front, you can see I have foiled that back center section all the way up to the top of her head and I've turned her around to finish up and do her front hairline to connect that area with the back area. and. Since she has some bangs, I 
chose for her and told her that we were not going to be doing anything lighter in the front that we were going to be doing a consistent blend from front to back and that's because of the way her bangs were hanging on her head or laying on her laying on her head and the length of them i just felt like it would look weird or just makes no sense to do a lighter bang for that and so we ended up choosing to do more of um, a consistent blend from the front to the back so when i feel like i've reached about like i would say 75 percent of her bang area i will continue doing those weaves up until then and then i will um, blend and match the fringe area with the back area and continue my slicing pattern after I feel like I've reached almost to the end of the fringe and that honestly just varies as well too um, it varies on how far back their fringe is I try not to take the weaving part too far back because I do want it to still blend with the slices in the back but I don't want anything too heavy and stripy in the bang area so I do like to generally weave that and just leave less negative space in between and just kind of weave back to back and do like more of a medium sized weave. So since we're not doing anything where the front is lighter, I did another weave right at the hairline on the side of her face and then we did a weave above the ear and now we are going back in and continuing that slicing pattern on the sides all the way up towards that center section. And again, these slices are going to be nice and see-through, very consistent. Um, as far as sectioning so that it's going to be really easy for me to touch up next time and just exactly know where I need to place my next placement. So since this is the side, I can do my slices a little bit further apart. They don't necessarily have to be as close together as the top part because this is kind of laying underneath the areas of where she parts her hair so leaving a little bit of dimension on that side area is okay and um, as we do sessions later on we can definitely see if we need to make these sections a little bit closer together but generally i would say that these side sections and everything um, in the back below the occipital can be pretty spaced out it's mostly that top crown area where she parts her hair is where I like to focus and detail and make sure that those foils are nice and close together if we are going for a more heavy highlighted look. So this next part right here has lately been one of my favorite things to do on any type of foiling work that I do. So right now I'm going in with her tip outs and even just adding a few tip outs in the front area makes a huge difference into kind of just putting everything together and making everything just blend cohesively. So I try to make sure that I pick a section that is not too thick. I'll tease and then I'll even weave and then start painting. Um, I make sure that I over direct towards the front center of their head. You can see I am choosing my section which I'm teasing right now making sure my teases are see-through enough and then I did a weave and then turned her around so that I could paint in front of her and painting in front of her with that over direction is going to help soften any type of lines so that we can um, it just blends really pretty and doesn't look like any stripes or any harsh lines when we all blow dry this all straight So I wanted to share with you guys what her hair looked like once it was ready with this lightener. I feel like it lifted really pretty and even though she had permanent color on her ends, it didn't really look too warm. I feel like it lifted pretty evenly compared to her virgin and you can also see with the lightener, it stayed put pretty well and I feel like it made the hair even out and lighten to a really pretty blonde so that we can get it ready for the toner. So now I'm going to be going in with a demi-permanent gloss, so I'm reach shadowing her. I would say I'm tapping her root 
about a half inch really quickly with a level six ash which is primarily a level six with blue tones in it and then after i do her root shadow i'm going to be going in with a rapid toner to create a beautiful silver tone and i like to make sure that i fully do a root shadow all over her entire head minus her hairline because i want to have the root shadow sit there the longest as that is going to really blur out any type of lines that we have since we did do slices there could be some harsh lines without a root shadow especially when you're doing a, a, such a transformation like this from dark to light so i always always do a root shadow for this purpose and then after i do my root shadow now i'm going in with the rapid toner so my rapid toner is going to be a mixture of some violets and some silvers into it and when i formulate my rapid toners i try to make sure that i have a bit more of a violet hue in there because the silver rapid toner tends to be very strong and i like to apply it on the mid first and i don't brush this part out just yet i want it to fully saturate all over throughout the head and then once i'm done applying everyone on the mid then i go in and start brushing and what that brushing is going to do is it's going to kind of drag down some of the toner onto the ends and it also is going to make sure that that mid area processes the longest and so that part is going to have the most pigment of the rapid toner first and then once i feel like the root shadow and that mid area with the rapid toner is looking like a really pretty color like there's no warmth at all that is when i'm going to be going in and hitting those ends and making sure then that everything else is covered and toned and once i start to see the slightest bit of violet and silver hue to it that's when i know it's ready to be rinsed Alrighty guys, so here is her finished look. I absolutely love the way that this came out. I feel like it blended really well with her roots. She was also very happy with the way that it blended in and she could already see the softness and grow out it would be in comparison to her last color. So for maintenance on this, I would recommend her to use some pigmented purple shampoo. I still love the Pulprite Barcelona purple shampoo for this one. Um, and then coming in for her touch-ups on her root. Normally, people who have um, more gray, the soonest that they would probably come in is about like 12 weeks or so. But she could probably go a little bit longer. It's just all based off of preference. Alrighty guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and as always, I will talk to you guys next week.